Okay. <laughs> that was the first words on the recording. Right there. And that <laughs> is a welcome to SCA TV right there. <laughs> Let's walk around the horn and everybody say hello. I'm Brett Galloway with the State Cook-Off Association. I'm Mike Whitey from uh, McDonough, Georgia. Brad? Uh, Brad from Grill Grade here. Keith? Keith? Keith Todd, SCA rep, Pennsylvania. Ed Riley, Ben Beach. There we go. Yeah, and Tim, Tim's hiding back there trying to get this show live. We'll be able to see <laughs> if it actually goes live, but uh, thank you for your patience. Technology is a, it's a challenge sometimes for sure. Brad, how you doing? I saw you were cooking some burgers earlier. Oh, Those looked good. Burgers. I'm telling you what, I mean, I didn't think it was possible to grill more, but we're doing that. <laughs> you know, so, yes, grilling up a storm, had a nice deal. I'm uh, not used to drinking after dinner, but I am tonight. A little scotch. I'm going to turn you guys up. I can't hear you. Uh, these burgers. You got a rule about scotch and show, so we got to hurry here. It's, what's That's the rule? I'm, uh, two scratches and you you uh, suck, Dad. That's my daughter saying. <laughs> she might be on to something. All right. Yeah. So you, how, are you guys keeping busy at Grow Grades? We're, we're very fortunate, yes. Business, I mean, the warehouse is, is functioning. Everybody else is working virtually. And uh, thank God for FedEx and our gang. We are shipping orders every day, Brett. So, yes. That, that's great. Good to hear. Yeah, good A lot of people us. cooking. A lot of people cooking these days. I think oh, more than sure. I remember, I'm like, you know, it's crazy and it's good because we all, I mean, I, like I said, I didn't think it was possible to grow more, but we are, and we're getting more pleasure than that than before too. So it's, uh, it's that when you're home, you're grilling. I know for well, me, it's given me time to experiment and, and do some different things. Uh, and I'm sure, I know Brett has been doing that and, and you guys have been doing that some too. So uh, yeah, it's really fascinating because, you know, as much as we don't really want the downtime and the whole thing going around, it has given us time to, you know, kind of reflect and slow down a little bit. And I don't I don't know that at the end of this that that's going to be a bad thing for any of us. Well, one thing about cooking food over fire, it's the basic of all human traditions. It, when things get rough, people bring it back down to some of the stuff we kind of originally identified. And there's um, anthropologists that say that cooking large hunks of meat over fire made us who we are. Everything from our DNA to, you know, the way our body types are to the way our brains function had a lot to do with the complex calories of cooking meat over fire. And that's when things get rough, we bring it back down to basics. And the basics is gathering around the hearth, gathering around the grill and cooking food. You are right about that. And I think more people in America are probably doing that now more than ever, Ed. I have seen it in our charcoal sales. You've seen it in your grill grade sales. It's, I mean, yes, we have more time, but it, it makes us, it's, it's like almost, it's almost like a tradition we forgot about. You know, I mean, I know there's, we're always cooking stuff, but if you think about it, gas and electric cooking is kind of a new, yeah. a not been cooking over wood fire for 99% of our existence. <laughs> yeah, and I know uh, Ed, uh, Keith, and Angel, and I all three are proud to be members of Team B and B. So, why don't you, you've got some examples of some uh, differences in, in some of the things that B and B products are doing? I do, I do. I'm going to see if I can get technology working here. Um, B and B, and we're, we're proud to be part of SCA and all the uh, all the you know working with all you guys over there. We have probably about sixty different types of cooking but so whatever your pleasure is we can probably help you fuel your passion i'm going to see if i can't flip this thing over real quick technology got to, where's that button i did it before you saw me. there you go oh. hold on there he is so what we've got right here is an example i'm going to start with charcoal here our charcoal let's see if you can get the nice b on there see we've got the nice b on that it's getting kind of dark here in Georgia. We've got Cowboy, we've got Royal Oak, and then Kingsford right here. You can see the difference just in the size of these charcoals. One of the things um, I was trying to get a, uh, oh, where'd you guys go? Hang on it. <laughs> Had a cantaloupe here, but I ate it. 
earlier last week. I can't wait a minute. Here we go. Somebody's gonna edit this out, right? Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The difference between <laughs> so what's what's when you, when you when you go to the store. This should be a question. I should offer somebody a free hat for this. When you go to the store and you're, you're, you're buying produce and you're looking at cantaloupes or tomatoes, what's the factor that when you pick up two, what are you looking for? You guys Animals guess? or tomatoes? Size. Something. You look for even peppercorns. You're looking for more weight, right? The density. Okay. The more water that has, the denser it is, the better the product is generally. And when you look at our products compared to some of the other products out there, um, it's a denser product. Density gives you a couple of things. It gives you a longer burn time. And that's one thing folks say about charcoal, that at least our charcoal, and Kel, you guys are familiar with Kel with Barbecue News, did a test in our char logs. And he burned it at two, he kind of kept it low because he had food on it, but I don't want to spoil it, but I'm going to see if you guys can guess how long he kept it in a barrel, cooking temperature with one, I believe he had one uh, charcoal chimney full maybe two charcoal chimneys full of uh, char logs. Can you guys figure how long he, he had that burn in its temperature? It sounds like a trick question to me. It's not. I would, say, he, I would say char logs went a long time. How they long? burn. Uh, I guess they they burn hotter off. but faster than I'm, the briquettes. I'm going to go four hours. hours. No. Nine. More. Twelve. More. What? 16. 225. And I don't want to steal Kel's thunder for 50 hours. 50 what? hours as it documented our char logs. And not me, I didn't do it, but he did it for 50 wow. hours. I was going, that's what I'm talking about the density of our product. Having a denser product makes it burn longer. When you burn longer, nobody's cooking for 50 hours, but that just shows you some of the economics involved with it. You can wick out the, 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 the air out of it and you could use it again and again. Second thing you get from a more dense product is it not only burns longer, it burns hotter, but hotter burns cleaner. Your Kingsford briquette is about 40% ash. When you finish this up, more than half of that becomes ash. Mine's 2% ash. So this bigger briquette is only 2% ash, which means less cleanup. But that also, if you think about it, if the charcoal ash is falling down into your grill, it's affecting the airflow. So having less ash, less air, I mean, less, imp uh, it's less affecting your airflow because a lot of, I guess, charcoal grills have a, you know, you've got to worry about the airflow, especially with your, uh, with your barrels. Um, burning cleaner also means less cleanup. Um, sometimes when this ash accumulates in the bottom of your grill, when you get the fat from your, uh, from the meat you cook with mixed with the ash, that's what they used to make live soap out of. You have a lot of ash buildup in the bottom of your grill and you're going to produce a lye chemical, and that lye will corrode the bottom of your grills. That's why grills rot out from the bottom, because that lye chemical is there. More ash, more lye, and more corrosive effects to your grill. Less ash, less cleanup. That's ours. I don't know if you can get the line on that. Less ash, less cleanup. Better, uh, you know, it's better for your grills. And that's just our briquettes. We've got um, a variety of different things. We've got, uh, if you work on the charcoal side, we've got the char logs we talked about. We've got lump charcoal. Um, we've got three species of lump charcoal. We've got hickory, oak, and mesquite. Uh, you guys know if you take like, uh, this is one thing I used to do a lot when I experimented with uh, grilling. You just take three types of charcoal and put, same, get a package of six chicken breasts and put it on three types of charcoal. Put two on your hickory, two on your oak, and two on your mesquite. Is that food going to taste different? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. because it matters. So having more density, you're gonna have more smoke into your food. And that's why you get mesquite, that's why you get oak. You're adding those, uh, those flavor profiles into your meat that you're cooking. Having less smoke gives you less of the, you know, less of the reason why you're cooking out to begin with. Um, so we've got char logs, we've got, uh, we've got um, lump charcoal. Uh, we also have, I'm gonna see if I can turn this around again. We also have, yeah. Technology, I love it. Are you in a dance hall? What are you, where are you? <laughs> Those are our, uh, these are our pellets. One thing you want to do about pellets is you want a longer, harder pellet. Yes, sometimes size matters. But the longer, harder pellet is going to 
it's going to cook longer in your uh, in your um, pellet grill. One thing that a pellet, let me put that back. One thing that pellet grills have a big problem with is uh, is the pellets are falling apart. So they clog up your auger system, right? Having a, a, a pellet that's more dense is going to give you a lot better smoke, a lot less crumble effect, so it won't build up all that ash and all the sawdust inside your grill. So our pellets are even longer. Something else to think about with B and B. I probably should have done this before. I have pictures for you guys. Is the um, is the three styles of Come on, flip over. This is live, right? All right, so we've got cook woods. You can see our cook wood. So we actually have logs that you can cook with. We have chunks you can cook with, and we have chips. The logs are fully for your, it's more of a, if you like your Santa Maria style, if you like, uh, like open cooking, the chunks are good for um, smoking because you've got some nice sized chunks. And of course the chips, you can use your chips in, uh, in a variety of different things. Let me switch back. You can soak your chips and use those things in uh, in your gas grill, as well as your pellet grill too. Um, maybe not so much your pellet, I mean your gas or your charcoal grill, where you can soak the chips. That affects the flavor of your, of your food that you're cooking. Um, we offer nine different varieties of cooking flavors, and you can mix those. A lot of people, I know a lot of people like to use, start out with some of our char logs, move some of our lump and then add the briquettes. I'm mean, not the briquettes, but the lump at the end. So you get the different smoke profiles on your food. They say that when you're buying charcoal, I mean, when you're buying, when, you, when you're competing at least, you wanna buy your best protein you can get, you wanna buy your freshest rubs and marinades and spices you can get, because those are the two different profiles of flavor. But the third profile is your smoky profile, or the when you go to turn it in, that smoke flavor that's coming off your food is a, it's, it's the last taste profile you put on your food, but it's the first taste you perceive because you smell that smoke even before you eat it. So having a quality type of charcoal or wood product is going to give you that better smell, which is the first taste that you get. I know uh, you were talking about the chunks. So one of the things I've been doing on my pit barrel is uh, taking my, I use the uh, ochre briquettes mainly. Those are one of my favorites. And, um, but I pour them in the center charcoal basket and then around that basket to the bottom of a pit barrel, I put the big chunks of hickory or apple or something around the edge of it so that they're not actually in the fire and they'll smoke through the whole, I mean, they don't burn up at all by doing that. And uh, one of the interesting things is <laughs> when I pull it off, uh, and, and all my meat's gone and I just leave the lid wide open when all that stuff fires up it, it, it it's a fantastic deal because then it burns all the stuff off but it's caused my smoke to be there the whole time and not just with the the flavor of the charcoal but, but also the flavor of whatever wood flavor I put in there too so um, there's a lot of different ways to use it I know uh, depending on what I'm running I'll run apple pellets through my pellet grill or whatever and I have different uh, boxes of the different flavors so uh, my go-to for just about everything is the competition blend, but uh, the apple uh, and the pecan is, is probably two of my other favorites that I'll single out and just do things with. So, Mike, yes, I hate sir. to cut you off. We've got to get Brad out of here. He's got to go. He, he has to be up early in the morning for a meeting at the okay. at Grow Great. Brad, thanks for coming on. We appreciate you, brother. Thanks for all you do for SCA also. Yeah, thank you, Brad. Change your life. You cook with thank those you, people. Man. It, it, it changes how you cook. Good product, Brad. Yeah, it is, absolutely. Adios, buddies. Adios, guy. And then there were five. Right. And then there were five. I have it set to try to go on. If this mf -er goes on, it'll be interesting, but I don't think it is. So we're just going to record everything. <clears throat> that was good, Ed. Yeah, Ed. that was great. Sorry, sorry Brad. <laughs> how many of those products do you carry, Keith? Uh, char logs, the briquettes, mm -hmm. the lump. Uh, Rob just hit the shelves yesterday. Um, I the don't think really there's good. pellets there yet. What's that? The rub is really good. The Trinity is my, it's one of my go-tos. Yeah, Jen, Jen's uh, pretty OCD on rubs when, when she sees a rub and she has them alphabetical order and on the shelf and 
I will say char logs are selling. I mean, people, I, I haven't talked to anybody that's, that's using them to see if they like them, but uh, they're definitely buying them. I mean, the, the, that, sh that area is getting hit pretty hard. Uh, B and B is usually the first one out over the weekend. And then uh, truck comes in Monday. So we're always ready to go again. Monday. That's awesome. Thursday. So if, yeah, it's, it's doing well. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to tell people about that uh, 50 hour cook time. Yeah. Yeah. That's a heck of a sales tool. Isn't it? But that's, yeah. that's not me. It had to have been two chimneys. Oh, it had to have been. Yeah. Yeah. I one lit and one non lit, maybe. Uh, you're probably right about that. <laughs> that I mean, stuff will burn yeah. hot, though, man. There's no doubt yeah. about that. It's well, I mean, look, this is a, a today I had, we had chopped down some bushes doing the honeydew list and everything else. And they were huge bushes, but they were green. So they've been sitting out by the fire pit for all weekend and all week. And so I finally decided I'm getting these things lit and burn up. So I put me a chimney full of char logs and got it just smoking hot where they were gray all over, lifted up the big bushes that are wet wood, dumped them in there. And within about 20 minutes, uh, everything was slap burned up. So I used them for a different purpose today, but uh, they do burn hot and they, they will burn wet wood. If you, you, if you want to you use them surprised who contacted me i've got two contact people from forge people who do you know forge metal like and yeah. they were it uh, you know pallets of the char logs because they burn hot and long and i guess you know with the forge they're adding wind to it too but i mean typically those things should get 800 degrees but they said they're getting up to 1400 degrees because oh, that's hot. right with the with the forge on it and you're melting metal at 1400 degrees yeah well, that's what Brett, we, you and I, we were talking about, and there's always been that debate on whether, you know, uh, you could cook a steak on a pit barrel. And I'm, I, I made a video the other day about uh, how hot I, I had my charcoal in that pit barrel, and there was flames coming all the way to the top. Like it was, it, it was coming. Yeah. So there's no doubt. And I didn't measure the temp because I was just burning everything off. But there's no doubt if you slap some grill grates on there that I could have burned a steak. Probably I would have had to let it settle down before I burn a steak on it. I, I don't, I think it would have been too hot for me. Hey, grill grates, char logs in your barrel. <laughs> That's the way to get that pit barrel good and hot are those char logs or, you know, yeah, the lump's yeah. good too, but those char logs, that's your heat source. Yeah, oh, maybe yeah. this weekend I'll try that on our barrel. Yeah. Well, do they still have the $1,000 barrel? $500 bounty. $500 bounty, I mean, if you can figure that out while we're on our break and then go back to competing, and you, you're competing for a thousand anyway, and throw an extra five hundred just because you cooked it over pit barrel. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> That's an extra five window. Yeah, you couldn't use five hundred bucks extra. Right. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. Well, Ed, let me ask you something. Just because it comes up occasionally, people ask me all the time because I have a B and B hat and my on my dash of my truck. And, People know that I'm on Team B&B, &B, and these are my friends and family, and they always ask me what the B&B &B stands for, and I tell them better burning, uh, but I'm not sure if that's the facts or if I'm just making that up. So, is it? I've been with B&B &B for a year, and I probably asked that question a dozen times, and he says it's better burning, but why would you say better and burning? I don't know, but it has something to do with uh, – the original company back in 1961, I think had something to do with CNC, which is, I don't know. I can't get it. I, I don't know. It's a mystery. It really is one of those enigmas wrapped in a riddle, cooked on low, wrapped in bacon and sprinkled. Yeah. With, right. With well, I'm going to keep going with, I'm going to keep going with better burning then since there's no I'm going better, better answer. Burning. Probably a better, probably better burning is what I'm going through, but nobody says better and burning. But yeah, I'm, that's what but I was maybe, told. I'd like to know maybe, why you put the and in it. <laughs> maybe because it's better burning is BB, and then it's just easier to say B and B sounds better. Could be something that easy. Uh, yeah. I we tell them it burns hot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you charcoal, you get B and B, you get a list of bed and breakfasts. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. true. That's very true. Uh, Brett, did you? It, it, I saw your video a little while ago, and I, unfortunately we can't get it to pop up here, but uh, maybe in the edit. But do you guys oh, have the, all the all the uh, plans together for the burger contest? 
yeah, we've got them, got it together now. We're going to open this thing up. It took us a long time to figure out how to do it. You know, they asked us since day one, well, we need to do a virtual cook-off. And, you know, there's just not a good way to do doneness on there. If you look on your phone and I look on my laptop, it's a different color. If yeah. you look on, you know, your iPad, it's a different color. So with the varying colors of it, there's just not a way to do doneness. So really, it just becomes a beauty contest of the burger, of the steak. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it it's it's very very hard to do that and texture someone said well you can judge texture by looking at it there is no way in the world to judge texture by looking at it i can tell uh, you that yeah. so um we, we played around and did some experimenting and i actually saw somebody else that's doing a, a virtual thing he's doing kind of a tournament where he voted on teams which i thought was a really neat deal is it the tailgate guys uh, i mean i think so or I think so. People, somebody yeah so they're doing a pretty neat deal, but I like the way their voting went. And then that, then it finally clicked. Our, our system's built on being blind judging and not knowing who it is. And I think if Malcolm Reed was to put a stake out there, he's got 600,000 followers on YouTube. He would win. What's that? He, yeah, 600,000 would kind of skew the results. Yeah, I can cook Malcolm and he's gonna slaughter me. I, you know, yeah. he, he's got that following um, and I'm not against Malcolm. The guy's an incredible cook and has won many SA events. I just use the example because he is somebody that's very popular on Instagram and YouTube. But um, so we found a way to make this thing blind. Uh, what's going to happen is on April 28th, they're going to turn in, or April 25th, it's a Saturday. We are going to send them instructions that morning. Um, and they are going to submit their, bur their burgers to us. It's going to be a burger contest. Kind of a reason I've been cooking so many burgers lately. Been trying to figure out how to get the word out there but um what they're gonna do is they're gonna cook the burger and we're gonna tell them that morning what needs to be in that picture it's going to be a close-up of their burger similar to the ones that are in the video that they'll see tonight um but there's going to be something in there whether that's a spoon whether that's a, a quarter whether that's whatever it may be i mean it it won't be a spoon and it won't be a quarter at this point because I already said it, but right. that's going right. to ensure they cook that burger that day. That so makes turn sense. Into me, yeah. Good idea. I'll be the only one that knows who they are and we're going to post them in groups of four and they'll be on the SCA group page, probably the regular page. Actually, there's more people on there um, and we'll put all four on there and they're just going to be labeled A, B, C, and D. And you'll get to look at the burgers and you want to look at how creative they are, how good they look and just, how, what's your desire to eat that burger? So when you look at that picture, it, it can't just be a mountain full of stuff. I mean, that, that last burger I turned in that was pink or I posted, that was a mountain full of stuff and probably indigestion waiting to happen. But we're gonna, they're gonna send the picture in and I want everyone to just vote for the one that looks the best. We're gonna vote for a day, then we're gonna take them down and it becomes a tournament at that point. It's the top one from each group is gonna move on the next day. We pit those guys against each other. Four, four, okay. So it's going to be a blind tournament. You won't know whose it is. One of the rules for the cooker is you can't post a picture of that burger anywhere on social. That was it's my good. question. I didn't come out. Yeah. Well, there's a uh, reason to put part, something in the picture. Part, you know, like, what's that? Crack stuff out. All right. What's that? I said, Keith already figured out that you can't post it anywhere else because if you do, then you go get all your minions to vote for your burger. Exactly. Right. Yep, exactly, Ed. So that's that's why we're going to have, A, they have to put something in the picture so we know they cooked it that day. And then then the only disqualification we really has, it has we have, good Lord, is if they share it on social. And then at that point, they're, they're kind of working the system and then they'll be disqualified. But other than that, man, it's anything goes. You've seen and some burgers the, out there that are crazy. And at the end of the day, I mean, this is all just to give everybody something to do. I mean, obviously, it's for, yeah. what, 50 pounds of Hassle meat, right? Hassle Cattle Company is co-sponsoring it with us. We're going to give away 50 pounds of Hassle Cattle Company beef of okay, their yeah. Wagyu burgers. So, that, I mean, that's worth a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll that, send that. some B&B swag out there as well. Yeah. So... The uh, that's what I was. Is there going to be any sort of special ingredients or any other rules, or is it just based on the best looking one? Or any, how's that going to work? It's going to be. I mean, people are going to get to vote on which one they like. The I mean, we want them to have beef in it, of course, because it's hassle. 
cattle company. Sure, sure. Um, but it can have anything else under the sun in there. You just you got to think when you look at it, man. Do I want to eat that? Is that edible? Well, well I tell you what. It, I think what it's going to turn out to be is the uh, burger version of the Bloody Marys at the shed, where oh, there's well, going to be some yeah. outlandish stuff. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what it is. It's going to be fun. It'll be, it gives guys something to think about for the next 10 days. They can go to the website first thing tomorrow morning and register. It'll be on there and it'll give them something to do. I mean, I, I wish I could enter. I, I haven't finished yet. I got some burgers in my head that are really waiting to be made, but. Um, is there any uh, registration fees or is it free to register? How's that work? No, there's, I think it's going to be $25 to register and we're going to, Still hadn't decided until tonight, the morning, if we're going to limit the number of teams in it. If we don't, if we don't limit it, we're going to, we're just, we're not trying to make money on this. We just want something for you guys to do. So right. we get a bunch of teams. That money is just going to get paid out. And it's not, it's not about making money. It's about entertaining and having, letting you guys have fun. And I think it's going to be a great time. Oh, yeah. If it goes well, gather again. see another contest the next week of a different type. Yeah. Now, that's Ed fantastic, man. What's that? Ed, Ed and Big Mike, you guys getting in? No. I'm not a cook. <laughs> I'm not that creative, so. I'm not that good of a cook. My uh, wife, I can cook. If you ask my son, he said he can't understand how I can cook a hamburger that good. And he, he he's a very picky eater. Uh, he's autistic, so it's really, you know, hard for him to find things that he likes. But he will – take a bite of my burger and slap it on the ground on the plate and say, how did you do it, man? But that's yeah. a basic burger. Right. That means he gets to taste it uh, in this form uh, with the people I know in the SCA and how they, uh, how creative they are. And these ancillary cooks will be in on this too. That's the fantastic thing about it is yeah. uh, you, if you can decorate it and make it look appetizing, that's the key. You know what I mean? Uh, like it, yeah, you can, I agree. You can, have, you can have overcooked it. It doesn't really matter in this particular case. And right. it's just all about, you know, making it look appetizing, which is really kind of neat. But, but I, I'm not that creative. So I looked at some you? of Brett's. I couldn't do Are you it. doing something? Keith, are you in? in? Uh, I'm, I'm, me and Angel might have to throw down against each other just to see who can, who can beat who. So, yeah, we, we'll probably beat. What y'all should do this next week is y'all have your own competition posted on y'all's <laughs> Facebook page, and whoever the winner is gets to enter the SCA one. Yeah, we can do that. That'd we be kind of cool. That. Well, I want uh, – Brad, I want you to do a uh, margarita contest, like Ooh. the uh, Bloody Mary, but with margaritas. Oh, yeah? That would be fun. And it gives us something to drink while we're uh, social distancing here. I don't think they. I don't think mine would stick around. I haven't been to a Mexican restaurant in so long. I don't think mine would last long enough to get a picture out of them. So. <laughs> wow. Easter. They're Day. doing. They're doing to-go margaritas at our Mexican restaurant here in Georgia right now. So if you go order some food, they'll give you to-go margaritas right now. I think we just opened Pandora's box. I, yeah. How can they, how can this, and they go, well, now you can't serve drinks to go. Right. I mean, no, I, I, I'm with you. What's going to happen after this? You can't put that back in the bottle. I, I hope not. What do you got there, Timmy? A little urine cup or something? What do you got? Got to take a test? No, I'm it's the margarita Mike. master. This is my margarita master trophy. Where'd you win Ooh. that? Nice. Bedford. That's right. I forgot. You won that son of a gun. There's like 90 teams there. Yeah, but all he did was take Cuervo mix and throw some tequila. All right. Well, that, that disqualifies you because you're a professional. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <For> your craft. <laughs> hey. It only took me four months to get paid. <laughs> Check didn't come from me. I can tell you that. Nope, it didn't. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's Has funny. Well, margarita before? Brett, have what? you done a margarita or has it always been uh, Bloody Mary's? We've done margarita contests. We've done open drink contests. Uh, people seem to like the Bloody Mary's just because they get, they drink them in the mornings, you know, and make them in the mornings and drink them. But I mean, we'll try anything. 
Let's do the well, margarita. And Bloody Mary's, and Bloody Mary's are so well known part. for having extra stuff in them. So, yeah. Well, margaritas, you can put mangoes and guava and watermelon. You can do all kinds of stuff. Tim's been very quiet. He's got a secret. Well, no, I, uh, I agree with you. I mean, I've done yeah. that. So. Can you put Brent and I, in this? Brett, <laughs> Brett, <laughs> Brett and I were at an event, uh, the first event where I ever met Brett at, and they had margaritas on Friday night. And uh, the winning one, you know, it's, it's all based on what people like. And the winning one tasted like it had store-bought Cuervo tequila mix and some tequila thrown in it. But – it you know that's what the judges like the best and who cares but i've uh, seen that a couple events yeah that just plain so, cuervo mix and you know or even the cuervo gold out of the bottle is yeah people like that flavor it's like cooking with a charcoal like bnb that's popular that a lot of people use it gives it that mm -hmm. kind of distinct flavor it gives that extra punch and it's, it's got to play in their minds somehow well and yeah. i think the same way with cooking steaks absolutely I mean, if you if you flavor it up with random weird flavors that the judges aren't used to, you're probably going to go, you know, outside the box too much and but, maybe not score as high. It may be great, but, you know, it may not score as high. Well, that that how does that explain the new cooks that come in with their own unique recipes and nail it? That's what. Well, that's hey, very true. Look, look at Look at Angel. She threw that recipe out that she had. She won her first one with that. Uh, yeah. She's That's true, too. Kids, kids and uh, I've always said kids and first-timers are so good because they don't overthink anything. They just go out there and cook a good piece of meat. Uh, you know, I know I was doing well when I first started into this, and then I went on the street to just doing terrible, and it's because I got there, and I started talking to other cooks, and this cook was doing this cook and this cook, and they would score one or two places ahead of me. And I'd go trying to copy what they did. And the next thing you know, I'm stressing every week. And I just finally said, you know what, I'm going back to the I started walking for about seven or eight in a row because I just didn't care at that point. Like, man, just go have fun with it. And that's the main thing. Well, that, 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 that shot. Oh, God. Go ahead, Ed. I wonder if he's got that. Where do you go, Keith? Well, Keith got that tumbler. No, oh, he might have refilled. No, my phone was ringing. Where, where'd you get that tumbler, Keith? Oh, uh, that's custom made. And no, Ed, you Ed, must happened to, Ed happened to send a box of uh, stickers and a, and a banner to hang on the store, and one happened to find my cup. I like it. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe I, something I, like that. And I'm still waiting on my banner there and you get. sticker. Oh, people, come on. Where are you at? <laughs> I got, I got far right now. Oh, Did bad you know? bad connection, Mike. I couldn't hear you when you asked for yeah. that banner. Bad <laughs> connection. I don't know what's happening. Hey. Well, oh, while we're, while we're, while we're on that topic. Hold on. What, what was that? I think he's got to take a uh, visit to the other room. Uh, what was that, Keith, you were saying? Uh, while we're on that topic of, of you wanting a sticker and a banner, so Angel being a senior this year and them not knowing when graduation's going to be, so and they, they started a thing with the seniors decorating a, their uh, front door of your house. Right. Um, Angel didn't, she don't play sports, so she didn't have no uniform or nothing like that to put up. Well, what do you think she has hanging on the front door? Uh, a B and B bag. There's a there's a, a her B and B visor, her nice. pink her pink girl greats hat, her uh, nice. B and B her her B and B uh, apron that she got from Greg. Uh, I think there's another apron. I don't know if it's one of our aprons or what it is, but yeah, that's that's what she has hanging on the front door right now. So. Wow, that's pretty How cool. cool. Is that? Yeah. That's a shame these kids are missing out on the last part of their senior year. Yeah, it is. But uh, they said they're going to have something. So, yeah, yeah, we'll make it. But You, um, you save 400 bucks anyway on the dress. <laughs> I know. She already has it. <laughs> oh, bummer. 
Uh, she yeah. wears the world championship. What the heck? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. She can wear that if she walks there. She can come down. We were just discussing that on Monday. Ken and I were, was the championship. So it's still happening. We're still having it. Uh, right now, it's still scheduled for the same weekend as it has been. Um, we've got some ideas we're looking at here and there, but I think we may have something big coming. We'll, we'll see. But we are having the championship for sure. That's good. Yeah. And, hey, uh, with, with that, uh, I just want to hit on something mm -hmm. with uh, the way that, that events have been canceling and and uh, you and Angel moving events around and some, you know, going to next year, some going to this year. Uh -huh. uh, one thing to help them promoters out is if you think you're going to cook an event, get your name in there, even if you don't pay at least get yeah. registered for it so these promoters know you're coming. Um, I mean, even my event, my double, I don't even know how many teams I can put in there, but if I end up with a, with a slew of teams, I'm, I'm going to have to cut it off. So if you uh, if you see something that you want to get to, make sure you guys get registered early. You know, help yeah. these promoters out. They know you're coming, and, you know, may, maybe on their end they can talk to people and get, you know, a, a bigger piece of real estate or something to go with it. But uh, – Make sure you get registered early because, like you said, it's going to happen. So if you you guys want to run, it's going to be there. Well, that, that's a great point. And then also they can sign up online and not have to pay when they right. sign up. Just let them know. And then I had the other point and I got distracted because Ed over there was pulling out a banner, I think. What is that? <laughs> uh, does it team B and B charcoal? I have one out. That. Uh, I think Mike had a heart attack. Where'd he go? You go. No, nah, I'm still here. My dang phone has died on me. Oh man. Well, dang it. You you missed that pretty banner. It even it was personalized to you. I was trying well, to you even <laughs> had your name on it, Mike. That's amazing. <laughs> He's gonna mail it. He's gonna mail it to Mike Wall. Right now he got one of them big fat sharpie markers or scratch your name off on the uh, angel Hey, I'll take I'll take any. Yeah. Any banners or swag I can get for sure. I, I've got, I've got some, but uh, man, the more the merrier. I do need something to hang up in my tent, and those they don't sell on the, on the page where I can go buy one. Well, I no. didn't, and we got to make something just for. The Oops. We're coming up with a hat that says Team B and B on it because a lot of a lot of people can buy the hats, right? So you can buy yeah. a hat, but if it's B and B, that's just going to go right to you guys, but. I want to make it look a little different. Can you, uh, for those of can we add a feature if we want to put the SEA logo on the side like those, the blue and white ones? Well, we gave Brad a bunch of those. Do you need well, some I more got of those, one. Brad? He has one. Yeah, I got um, one of those. Yeah. Just, yeah, we got them in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, they're okay. nice. Well, that, yeah, those, we only make those to the SEA, so we'll give those to you and, you guys can get one from the SCA with that on there too. So it's the SCA blue in the background because I don't even have any of those. It's, it's the Only the cool kids yeah, have those, right, Mike? Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. I That's the one that rides on, on my that. dash. That's the one oh, that rides man. on my dash that everybody asked me about. Uh, Brett, but we can probably, you guys probably have a little small patch that we can get and do it ourselves, don't we? Yeah, we have a small, yeah. It's a little yeah. bigger than what's on there, but yeah, it would work. Yeah, put it on the opposite side with the flags, whatever. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Well, we we'll go you, I, I've got patches too. Somebody's calling me in there. I got patches. We can get you guys some patches if you want to. What's going on with my phone? Even I definitely need the patches. Um, B and B was. Who wants B and B was uh, at one time had us a bunch of had all the reps a shirt and that I, I don't guess ever fell through or something but uh, <laughs> just the reps though we're gonna get them yeah yeah that's yeah all right. reps. the where, SCA reps where you at Mike I'm here the SCA oh, reps yeah we'll we'll help you guys because with the ACE the SCA and does it say B and B on there anywhere yeah yeah. I it think had, that was, uh, yeah, mine, mine says it on my arm. It was a B and B on the chest on a lot of them, but he made one because he works at Ace. But there's, they're on all of them. 
the only one I don't have on my shirt is B and B because we didn't have it uh, a a thing of it at the time. When I, yeah, we didn't have the file that we needed for the B and B, but that's the only one. I, but I always just wear the hat. So it, I I, I, I cover you. all the SCA sponsors uh, and all the big major sponsors anyway. So, um, but yeah, man, I, I, if if we can order, I, I mean, I don't mind ordering a patch just to get me when I make my I next shirt. Order the patch. I'll have to look because we, there's a third party that fulfills that, but um, we'll get, I'll send you, cause I know I talked to you before about this banner. So I'll get this banner cause it's slow getting the stuff from the party that I get it from, but I've got like yeah. five banners. One. Talk well, to yeah, you about a banner guy. Yeah. I think I sent you guys one too. Didn't I? Yeah. Keith. Yeah. Yeah. I came to the store. Yep. Okay. So. Well, I know. Uh, so, Ed, just so we're not so so Brett will have something to uh, edit together and put together a good show. Does B and B have anything new coming up that we might that you might be able to tell us about or anything uh, special going on after the whole quarantine's over? We're working on a few things. Um, what do you guys feel about mesquite charcoal briquettes? Is that not the yellow bag? No. That's that's what? So, briquette made out of mesquite. Because right now our briquettes are made out of oak and hickory dust. Like when we do our, um, and that's one thing cool about B&B, when we process our lump charcoal, so when the lump charcoal goes through and fall off, the fines, that's what we make into our briquettes, okay? But the mesquite is not added to that flavor. So we just use the oak and the hickory to make our briquettes and our, our char logs. But what if we use mesquite briquettes? Do you think there's any need in the SCA? I mean, I, I don't see why not. I, I think people have a lot of different flavor profiles. Would you yeah. rather see that or pecan? Oh, you got me there. Mm. Yeah, pecan. I'm probably going pecan. Yeah, I'm a pecan guy. <laughs> I'm a pecan guy. <laughs> He's like, we don't well, have hold the whole process starts, I mean, so we start with, obviously we start with the log, right? So we take the log and we put that to a uh, carbonated, right? We reduce it to like 3%, this is about 30% moisture, then we reduce it to about 3% moisture, right? From that, when these things get too small, because you don't want tiny pieces, when the small pieces fall through our grading system, that's where we collect it and make our briquettes and our char logs. We don't make a pecan, um, Look, is there a need no, for that? Right. Do people... But tell me, I mean, why not? I'm always trying to innovate stuff. Right now we do make a mesquite lump, so we have the fine parts of the mesquite that we have to throw out. I'd rather make a product with it if there's a market for it. Um, so having well, mesquite. I think people would mix it. They buy uh, it they... and the regular and mix them. <laughs> I think it would burn hotter because mesquite would burn hotter. There's not yeah. a lot of flavor that comes off of it, but there is a little bit that comes off of it. But I just, nobody else has it. Nobody has a mesquite briquette. So that's something I've been working on. Um, I like that. I kind of think anybody, I, th I kind of think a B&B &B fan is going to buy whatever new product comes out. If I'm a briquette fan, I'm going to try whatever new briquette you pull out. Um, if I'm a, a, you a, a pellet Hi. fan, oh, I'm here. Uh, yeah. You lost me. Can y'all well, still see me? We've got, like I said earlier, we've got probably over 60 SKUs of product, more than any other charcoal manufacturer out there. And we just want to stay on top of all your um, really needs. And, and the, the, the fuel source provides a, um, a flavor profile. And then when you start mixing different things, like, like you were talking about mixing apple with some of your hardwoods, you're getting a different flavor profile that's familiar, but it's a little different. You know, I mean, you're not going wackadoodle and, and throwing something else on there that you know that the people don't recognize. So it's just it's the same thing, but just a little different. Um, and I think that's a winner. So I think maybe if we do the mesquite briquettes, that you know maybe people like it, maybe they don't, but it's you know it's something different out there. I mean, I'd give it a shot. There's an yeah, idea. Absolutely. And what is your competition be... blend of pellets, Ed? Say it again? You have a competition blend of pellets? We do. It's oak, 
pecan and cherry. Okay. Yeah. And one thing about our pellets, you guys want to add this, add this in together. Our pellets, when we produce our wood, right? So we have our wood logs, and then we turn them to chunks, and then from the chunks, we turn them to chips. And the smaller chips, the things that don't make it, the tiny, tiny pieces, we turn to pellets. Okay. So our pellets, you can't see that too well, but our pellets are basically the refined fines from our logs. So as things get reduced down, we send those to the pellet plant and it's our, it's our blend. So it's generally, if, if you're getting a, a, a flavor like apple, so it's gonna be 70% hardwood, 30% apple. If you get post oak, it's gonna be 30% you know, post oak, 30% hickory. Um, 70% hickory, excuse me for my math. But our oak, our, um, our hickory are 100%. Everything else is mixed, but it's 100% it's um, of the wood source. You know, a few years ago, some other companies got in trouble for adding oils to the, oils to the pellets. Most uh, other companies use oil. What's that? I, I was going to ask you, because I know other companies were adding oils to theirs, if you guys so, did. In fact, our binder, this is what I was told, our binder, I don't know if you can see, it's got a sheen to it. That actually is some of the that is still left in the, uh, in, in the original wood. So when they make the pellet, there is no cornstarch rice binder. A lot of times when you use some of my competition, you have that oily, fishy smell. That's because they use a rice or cornstarch binder on the outside of it. Ours is the natural sap and resins that are left in the wood. So it's got a, it's, it's, it's a tougher wood. If you have to do a PSI, ours, ours is a tougher pellet than the competitions. And that's what you want in your pellet grill. You want something that's going to burn hotter. You don't want it to fall apart because alder is not the best wood to use. They just use it because it's cheap. Uh, but ours, like I said, ours is reclaimed from our chunk and our chip process. When, ours, when, when our chunks turn to chips, we have sawdust left over. That's what produces our pellets. So, um, have any plans on any new pellet flavors out there right yet? Uh, because um, we've got nine right now. So we do have. Um, what is it? I'm sorry. We do have peach coming out. So peach is a new one, and we might bring orange back too. Orange is more of a Caribbean, type of, uh, you know, Cuban type of thing that you see down in South Florida, and maybe maybe a little bit in Arizona. Well, I know uh, it was, I guess it was last year, maybe, maybe six months ago, uh, the pellet world was taken over uh, from what I saw with everybody going out and buying those charcoal pellets to get that charcoal flavor. Have you guys uh, entertained that at all? Uh, it kind of died off as fast. It's kind of curious. So my understanding about charcoal, once you turn to get charcoal, obviously you take, you know, you take your wood, right? and you, you put it in, uh, you kiln it, right? So you turn it into a carbonized thing like this. You reduce the amount of true smoke flavor you have. This is gonna have a lot more smoke than a charcoal briquette. A charcoal briquette has less smoke than, than, a, than, a, than a chunk, right? That makes sense. Our chunks are what produce our pellets. If you put charcoal in pellets, you're gonna reduce the smoke flavor. So it didn't, it was kind of like an anomaly. I don't know, if, I don't know if that, why people were doing it, but it wasn't for smoke flavor. And what you want for, you know, when you want your meats, you want the smoke flavor. So closest thing we have is our Jack Daniel pellets. Cause what we do with our Jack Daniel pellets is we take the, the charred barrels and make the pellet out of it. You can see the difference in the colors, right? So the Jack Daniel pellets got more char to it. So that's probably the closest thing we have to have in charcoal in it, but the more charcoal you have, the less smoky flavor you have because this is going to have more smoke than this will. Sure. This is going to have more heat. So maybe that was the theory of having this having more heat to it. But you know, your charcoal, most pellet grills are going to be automatic. They have you set the temperature and they'll stoke the fire if it's too cool, or they'll you know wick out the the air if it's too hot. So I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't know the having charcoal maybe i gotta look into that a little bit more well i know that, that a lot of people that i talked to were missing in the in the pellet grills they were missing the charcoal flavor even though they could you know you can run a, a charcoal smoker lower but you still get that charcoal flavor you instead of more woodiness you still get some of that charcoal char to it 
So I think that's what people were trying. I just did, and I've never tried them, so I was just kind of curious as to uh, you know B and B's thoughts on that or, or 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 where it may go. Like I say, I think it died out as fast as it came, so I don't know if it even be profitable. But well, I mean, it's it's certainly interesting. I look into it a little bit more. But that charcoal flavor, my memory of the charcoal flavor is when you want, and Brad, if he was here, we talk about it, you want those sear marks on it. And that sear mark is, you know, the caramelization of the, uh, of the amino acids, right? That's, you, it's almost you want the brown, you don't want the black. So you really don't want that deep charcoal. I mean, I hate to say it, sometimes it gets almost takes like an ashtray if it's too charcoal-y. Um, but it's, it's. It might be a familiar taste, but I don't know if it's the best taste because once something, you know, like if you burn something, uh, Brett, you could attest to this. If you put black lines on your meat, you've burnt it. You want the brown lines on it. Once you burn it, I mean, I grew up, my parents didn't know how to, sorry, mom, dad, if you're listening, but they didn't know how to cook and <laughs> do it on burnt. <laughs> Got used to it, but that's really not healthiest thing for you because once it turns black that's in its base form it's a carbon molecule your body can't digest carbon molecules it sticks inside of your system um and a lot of a lot of bad things can happen with things that you can't digest but when it's brown was that lice brown you know the millet reaction when it's caramelized that is a digestible uh, it's a digestible flavor so i'm not sure if that charcoal taste is somebody hearkening back to bad cooking but I don't know how healthy. I'll have to look into that a little bit more. Oh, yeah. You know, the dark lines is just cooking it so hot, you know, and it caramelizes, but it's also going to just burn it. But if they use garlic in their rub, that garlic's what's burning on there, and it's going to give them a bitter aftertaste, as more so than the, even the charcoal. It's just the, you know, what, what you have on there, if you have too much sugar in your rub or the garlic, that's what toasts it. Gives you that bad aftertaste. Black. Like the Cajuns do that blacken, and that's just burnt, burnt rubs, really, is where that comes from. Oh, I thought I was Cajun until I was 14. Turns out my mom just burned everything, man. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. You know, what's funny is that was a, uh, I mean, you say that kind of jokingly, but, I, you know, oh, a lot of the older, and I, I'm getting to be one of these people now, but a lot of the older generation, and the people that are in their 70s and stuff, uh, when I cook them a steak now, uh, whether it be family or whatever, they look at me like I'm the dumbest person in the world. Like I'm not eating that. There's no way that's not even cooked. And I'm like, no, it's a, it's, it's perfectly cooked. It's great. And, but they're so used to being kids back then they would have things that they had to burn out of the meat. So they would just overcook everything and they got used to eating shoe leather steaks. Well done steaks were a norm, you know, for old school folks who didn't have good refrigeration and they didn't have, you know, the, the ways to take care of uh, meat and things. So they just overcooked everything. So it's funny to see some of the older generation when I go to cooking them a steak or if I'm at an event. Matter of fact, I had a lady that said she didn't like steak that much. She told me and Jared Ogle that. And I, I said, I said, well, you need to come back down here. We're so, these are some of the best cooks in the business and you'll get a good steak down here. And uh, so she came back down after we turned in and she said, all right, I'm ready to have a good steak finally. And I opened up my, uh, tin pan where I had it all cut up into pieces and she went to grab a piece and she jumped away and said oh no I'm not eating that that's not cooked and she was like I gotta have it well done and I said well that may be why you've never had a good steak because they're well done <laughs> so right. she didn't try one though I you know the, um, the, 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 the all the temperature gauges we have that say when chicken's done when pork done, when beef done, those were all set in the 50s. That's before we had Wagyu, before we had grass fed. Those temperature settings are so off nowadays. Um, I mean, what have, what, can you think of anything we're relying on that was developed in the 1950s? So, Technology uh, sometimes, wise, no. <laughs> no, exactly. So I think sometimes with with that perception like you're saying they're thinking you had to overcook the meat because the meat might have been sketchy but now we've got so much stuff going on with the meat that i think if you cook it to what the fda says is done it's overdone i think if you cook a, a medium a, a staking competition to 145 which is what they call for medium yeah i think you're out yeah, i think you've lost that event yeah I mean, you agree yeah 
You guys cook yeah, it I, at? Yeah, horrible. What, steaks? Steak. Uh, depending on the temperature and where we're at and, and, and that kind of thing, I'm pulling around the 130 mark okay. and letting it override probably to 137, 138, maybe 140. I, I don't want to yeah. go much higher than that because I'm going to be out. Oh, Mike gave up too many secrets. He's out. <laughs> Timmy uh, said, no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> Slapped down by Timmy, Pete. I, I, can, I can remember... <laughs> What's that? What do you would cook your steak to, Brett? You can't compete anymore. Well, when I competed, <laughs> I, we've actually won from 126 to 142. I'd okay. want to close different range of temperatures because there's so many factors that come into play if it's humid out. I mean, if it's hot and humid, if you, know, if you get it closer to your desired temp, then you're not having it on there as long, so it's not going to carry over as long, the carryover cook on it. So there's... There's so many factors that play into it. It's really hard to – you could pull 128 one day and 128 the next, 135, 135, and they'd be totally different. Isn't that right, Keith? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, we Ed, we have trouble from coming up here in the East Coast going down to Texas. I mean, I might as well wipe my ass. But, you know, I mean, it was – yeah, humidity, hundred and some degrees. Well, shit, we don't yeah. we don't get hundred degrees unless it's pouring down rain <laughs> and something's on fire next to us up here. We cooked one, and the time we took it off to the time we turned it in, we let it rest, brought it in. It was fourteen degrees higher. It was hot as hell and humid that day, but we've seen them also go two degrees in the box. So it can. Malcolm Reed did a great. Um, article on that. If you look up how to barbecue right, I think he called it carryover, s steak carryover cooking. But it, it's kind of opposite of what you would think it would be. It was a good article. Timothy, what about you? What do you cook your steaks at? I don't know, whatever the George Foreman says. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I <laughs> Yeah, it's hard telling with me because, you know, most uh, all my equipment's junk. So I, it depends what thermal pin I use. They all three have different temps. So uh, anywhere probably between high 120s to probably 140. That's about, that's what most folks say, 120s to 130s. That's where I'd like to pull my steak too, especially if you've got a good steak. I mean, you've got a good steak. You want to you want to taste that meat a little bit, you know. Well, that plays into it a lot too. If the steak's ever been frozen, it's going to have a little gray tint to it. It'll lack that pop, but it's going to take longer to. That's when guys complain, "Man, my steak had a stall today. I don't understand. That steak was previously frozen." You get a like a wagyu steak that we used at World Food this year. A um, couple of the other events. Um, that hassle provides, and those cook quicker because there's more fat content in them. They're, right. they're a lot faster. Less tissue damage if it's not been frozen too. So it, it, the the what do you call that the um, oh thermodynamics of the steak were quicker then. Yeah, we toured a facility and they said there is no difference in a frozen steak and a fresh steak. And, I, I could put them in front of my wife and she'll tell me exactly which one's been frozen. I, and I know you guys could. I think I can smell it sometimes. You can smell a frozen steak. I don't know what it is. Something about that crystallization of the, of the, of the moisture that's inside of it, you can kind of tell. Maybe it's my freezer. I don't know. My freezer's got a lot of <laughs> weird stuff in it. I, got a, I have a vacuum sealer and I, it still doesn't help. What do you guys think each other vacuum? But uh, there's nothing to do with steak, but sous-vide. Legit or no legit? The sous-vide method. The sous-vide? What about it? I know you don't do steaks that way, but in the barbecue world, should that be allowed? It's allowed in our world. I don't know about barbecue if it should or not. Um, but in our world, they're allowed to sous-vide. Uh, it's any fire or heat source. And in, all I can, guys love the sous-vide, you know, the guys that do it. and. I think the best thing I can say about sous vide is from my side in the judge area is I watch guys that I know are at the event and I usually cut steaks at an event and 
I can tell you every steak that comes in that sous vide that I cut because they look great. Yep, I can All right. tell. They look great. Yeah, but they do. But you see, guys on Instagram, I'm telling you, man, they Instagram's got some badass filters because they look amazing. But I've never seen one like that at an event. Well, maybe I did, and it just got it just came by. But you hear guys talk, oh, I, you know, they'll post it online. I, I sous vide this week or whatever it is. But somebody will win with it if they can get that color right. So it's the color that throws off. Is that what you're saying when they, when they sous vide? Well, I've heard it's a little funky. But I, some people love that texture. They're soft, but the color is usually what gets them. Looks, don't you agree, Ken? Or Ken? Keith, sorry. Yeah, yeah. When I when I caught, I can tell if love was because it it does look purple. Yeah, Mike, you've cut before when the sticks come through. Have you seen? You could probably point them out. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Uh, I didn't know at first what it was. I just knew there was a difference. I think that the you know you would have to work on the color in the in the I guess in the bag or in your finish somehow because yeah. the it just doesn't have a good. You know, you see some that are red or some that even if they fit on the grill. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, I don't, I don't, it's going to be hard pressed for somebody to win on it, you know, but they will. The chair, they would. I was getting a second or a third with it once, but they'll get it. It just, somebody's got to perfect that color and maybe it'll happen. I want to finish with a cherry wood. Cherry puts a little bit of pink into the, into the meat. Well, I don't, if you're sous vide and you're bringing it to a certain temp and then you're just going to finish it, put your sear lines usually on it. And I don't know if it's on there long enough to give that Probably. You know, even right. cherry to give it a temp. And most cooks are only going to cook it on one side because they're going to not try to cook that other one. They're not going to get it over yeah. where they wanted it. So they're going to put their grill marks on one side, flip it over, and then wait for it to finish to get yeah. all the way to camp. Yeah. And for the record, we only judge the top of the steak. The bottom of the steak's not judged. They, we cut it on a bias when we cut it so you can see doneness. But if they can't see it well, they can lift it with a knife just to see the doneness, but they're to judge the top of the steak. So okay. if there's not lines at the bottom, it doesn't matter. Interesting. Yeah, you'll see guys, not, not, guys and girls now not cooking the other side of the steak. They'll, they'll sometimes cook... Uh, they put their marks on one side and then raise them up on the little more uh, grate that PK has. Uh, raise them up off the heat somehow with one of the, even I think M Grills has one on their seat fours uh, where you can lift it up and put it up above the grate a little bit yeah. just to kind of slow cook it for the heat. Oh, PK has that. Over under. The over under, yeah. Yeah. It's great. And over under, it's nice. Yeah. Those are nice grills. All those grills are nice. So I used over under on top of the chimney. That worked that really cool good. Because then I got above it and I was able to get a little height without charring the bottom of it. Yeah, and I, I think that's why a lot of people started using the raising them up a little bit is because uh, you know you found that leaving them directly on the grill grate so they come up all the way to temp uh, would sometimes char that bottom more than you wanted it to. And you get a little bit of that flavor, that, that burnt flavor. Um, so techniques, that's what makes it fun. That, well, it's anything. Guys, I've heard of guys cooking on a shovel. They dig a hole in Amsterdam. Guy dug a hole, cooked on a shovel, and got a fifth place. You didn't even have to have a damn grill. There's a whole group of guys that call itself the chimney cartel that cook on chimneys. So it's right. wide open, and that's, well, that's in, the way it should be. Uh, Ed, that's in our area. That chimney cartel event was mm -hmm. supposed to go on April 25th, and they had to cancel it, but it's in Marietta. So whenever yeah, that comes up, I'm sure you'll come. We wanted to help them out. I really think that chimney cartel, at, at Brad, at the, at the SCA, when I saw them – where's Brad at? When I saw the SCA right before you walked into the award ceremony and they were cooking – all the different variety of things on those chimneys. I'm like, this is the future. That was beautiful. That's you cooking an SCA event with a chimney cartel. You just what you what you did. You allowed the creativity of the chefs to go crazy because they were cooking shrimp and scallop and chicken. And I'm like, well, that's what people want to do anyway. They, I, I mean, 
it, it's oh, just that was having the ability. That was an ancillary huh? category. For the top three in ancillary, they were competing against each other for like a little side bet. Didn't that smell? Didn't that smell delicious though? Oh, it, well, yeah. Well, I got to taste two of them, so <laughs> they were delicious. What do you well, got? What do I think in that judges' corner? <laughs> Who do I gotta know? <laughs> well, I just happen to know two of the cooks are here from, and they're both out of Florida, so uh, I know them a lot. John, uh, Tanya Pendre, and Judy Jones. So. Uh, I just walked up when they were done, uh, turning in for that event, and they obviously I taste their food all the time, so they let me have some. So I did get to taste two of the entries. <laughs> but yeah, it is good. It's all about who you know, man. Yeah, so, you, you brought up something interesting, Ed. So if you know, I don't think we could judge a steak with the way we the system is with the virtual cook-off thing we, we've talked about, but you could judge a steak. And sides, which yes, guys, more creativity to put a composed plate together. Um, uh, BamaQ, the BamaQ TV show, they're uh -huh. doing one right now. Uh, yeah, and it's exactly what you're talking about. You cook a steak, yeah, it was, I think it was like $15 to enter. Uh, you do yeah. a steak and sides, and then you just post a picture, and they'll do it like you're talking about with the burgers. People will vote on it. So it's going to be all about looks and presentation, but uh, they're but doing one right now. I think it ends uh, today, as a matter of fact. So uh, isn't we'll look on the BAMAQ Facebook page. Uh, uh, because I would know, I would know if you cooked it, because I would be like, oh, that's Mike's grill, or that's or that's Brett's or something, and it becomes popularity. I'd, I'd like well, Brett's having it in a blind. I don't know judge. if it's going to be blind. Yeah, I mean, there's always, I mean, if you think about it, if, if I've got, you know, 500 contacts in my phone book, on my phone, mm -hmm. and I shoot out a mass text to everybody and say, hey, go vote for this steak on such and such a page, sure, that's yeah. the only way you can get them. You can't do it with your 50,000 followers on YouTube or, you know, Facebook, because somebody's going to see that. But, you yeah. know, there'll be some manipulation of it. But again, it's, you know, sure. this is about having a good time. And hopefully everybody will be yeah. honest. I mean, you know, it's an honor system a little bit. But, you know, hopefully everybody just has fun with it and doesn't take it so seriously that you're willing to cheat. That's just kind of crappy anyway. So, no you know. We'll probably see one on the shelf there at the uh, liquidator place. Oh, whoops. Oh, what? yeah, right. <laughs> I'll take a picture of it right in front of my sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the background. <laughs> or I'll just be holding it. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I, I you know, I, I hope everybody, you know, is not so competitive that they can't relax and have a good time and are willing to go those lengths to try to get a, a win just to say they won something. I, you know, there are people like that, and I, I don't really – yeah, I'm not one of them. I'd rather – if I'm going to beat you, I'd rather be able to say I straight up beat you. I'd feel too bad. And plus, karma, I believe in it a lot. So, karma will come back and bite me. I would, I would never walk again if I were to cheat to win one. Well, I think we do need to be creative at these times because this is a – I mean, this is crazy. We can't even freaking go to church on Sunday. We can't – our kids are out of school for – like, school's canceled. But nobody's ever canceled school. So, right. I think having – Brent, what you're coming up with, just anything you can come up with. We just got to be creative to get through. Hopefully, a few weeks, this will be all over with and get back together again and start cooking and getting our competitions. But meanwhile, I think it's a good idea to do something, right? Yeah, there's, there's going to be people who's going to skew the system, but this is a one-off for sure. Yeah. yeah, this is just for fun. We, it's just something for us to do, and it gives us a reason to check back in with everyone, and it's going to be right. fun. Ed, did you happen to see me and Brett, uh, our show we did where we lit charcoal and all the random ways we could light charcoal? That was good. He told me about that. He was going through the house lighting it with different different uh, items, yes. I didn't see it, it all, but I did that. Uh, what did we figure out? The chips were about the best. Chips, um, Oreos, Oreos, without the cream filling. Oreos. <laughs> ironically with the cream filling do not start a fire but once you get them started the cookie part started they'll burn for like an hour <laughs> so, uh, they work. duct tape works uh, i rolled up a piece of duct tape uh it works really well and uh egg carton was pretty good 
Yeah, egg carton worked. It took a long time for egg. I took a, yeah. a cardboard egg carton and put filled all twelve pieces up with one piece of B and B charcoal, and then just lit the egg carton. And <laughs> the egg carton burnt really fast. And I thought, well, there's no way this is catching the charcoal. And then as we went through the show, an hour later, uh, the the whole thing it was just fired up. And I mean, it was going strong then, but. Uh, I told Brett during that show, I said, you know, we're cooking with all, we're starting this charcoal with all these different, pro these different things, the chips and the dryer lint and, uh, you know, everything we can think of, but we're kind of skewing the system because we're using B&B &B anyway. So that was, <laughs> we, we, we well, should have used some cheap charcoal or some crappy charcoal and seen if we could light it with these things. And then it no. was a different bugger. <laughs> My buddy used to work at Albertsons, and he said if that place ever caught on fire, the joke was to hide behind the Albertsons charcoal because that shit won't catch fire for anything. <laughs> so I don't believe that cheap charcoal will light any faster. Yeah. Well, I tell you this, uh, Ed. I did a, I did a test uh, when I first got into B and B because one of the reasons I did uh, was because we were in, in Alabama at an event, and I had I was using uh, another brand. I'm not going to throw them under the bus, but. So I had filled up two chimneys, put my fire starters under them, and sat them on my on my PK and walked down to talk to somebody while they got fired up. And right. I was probably an eighth of a mile away down at their tent and looked up. And I mean, we're at a firehouse uh, where they're doing this event. And there was so much smoke coming out of my tent. My wife and my niece had to get up and leave. And I'm standing there next to him, and he's firing up his B and B, and there's hardly any smoke coming out of his chimney. And I was like, "What in the world?" And he's like, "What? What are you using?" I told him. He was like, "Well, that's why." He said, "That's there's a reason this stuff they talk about it burning cleaner." And so that's what what got me onto B and B. Uh, and ever since then, I've used it. When I first got me some, I put them in w one with that brand of charcoal and one with B and B. Fired them both up, and one of them smoked like crazy until it caught, and the other had had some smoke, obviously, but not near as much. I mean, the other one will smoke you out. B and B does burn cleaner on that end, for sure. And then, I mean, I always tell people there's there's we, we we're made different, and that does make a difference. And then you guys with the SCA and just just people at home or just I mean, every day I get people from around the world asking, how can I get it? How can I get it? Like. Listen, we're a small company based out of Texas. We're working on it. We just don't have the distribution to get everywhere. But there's there's something that happens when you take a B and B. Can I get a little product shot here? Well, this has got there's a B. Can you see it? When you get that B and B burning versus something else that's got a different a different logo on it. Um, I mean it's there's it's there's a reason why you feel you feel this, I mean, you feel like you got a rock compared to a feather here. What do they have in this? What's in this? I mean, it's a lot of different stuff. It's not the same that's in mine. So there, there is a difference. And, and I, we were talking about that earlier. It makes a difference. When you cook it, it is a third taste profile on your food. And, and, and it, it affects what you turn in for steaks. It affects what you turn in to set your house, too. Yeah, and there's nothing better than looking down in your grill and seeing those little bees uh, lit up like behind my head right now. Where let me switch you over. Like yeah, there the you one go. thought I was getting my arm. Huh. Yeah, so that's a that's a pick I took in my in my grill one day when I was uh, fixing to cook and everything was fired up and running good and I was like, man, what a cool pick that'll be. So uh, anyway, sure. yeah, I love you some B and B. I appreciate uh, everything you do for uh, me and Keith for sure and Angel. Uh, and all the other team B&B &B members. And I know uh, Brett and Ken really appreciate everything that B&B &B does for the whole sport. So, sure. Yeah, thanks. I think it's important to start talking about tonight. We're all cooking out more. It's just, I mean, it's almost like just centering ourselves. We're recentering ourselves. And I just hope when this thing breaks, we're ready to cook out and, 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 and just come up with more creative ways and better ways and more, just more entertaining get people together. That's really what it's about. Right. You build a fire, people gather. Is, what is are true. you guys cooking this week? Keith, what are you doing? Um, I, I have some ribs for a customer Friday. Um, I okay. put out a little thing that said, if you want some meat, I'll cook it. Uh, and whether it be brisket or 
pork or chicken or ribs or steak. Uh, and so somebody ordered two racks of ribs from me Friday. So I'm definitely cooking that. And then I'll probably put something on for the weekend for a bigger, longer cook. All right. How about you, Keith? Well, uh, apparently the challenge was set there between Mike and Ed. So, uh, I'm doing uh, burgers, I guess. Angel, is she in on the burgers? Uh, she, yeah, well, she'll figure out. She'll find out about it. I probably, maybe I should tell her Friday. Friday, usually Jen cooks up on the eggs. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I just sent an email over there. Yeah. <laughs> You'll watch this dipper off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, buddy? Yeah. Timmy? I did uh I did pizzas the other day. We did make your own pizzas uh with the girls and so uh did those on the Traeger. So that was that was fun. So what are you doing this weekend, Timmy? I don't know. Uh, I'm probably gonna do a burger. We'll see. Okay. All right. I the the problem I have is I'm a big fan of the smash burger, and I don't think a smash burger is so gonna, that's, do, I was gonna, do, gonna do a smash well. burger. That's what I'm doing is a smash burger. Yeah. I I, I think you're you're I think a a fat burger is gonna photograph better than a smash burger, but we'll see. I might have to play around with it. I, I'm gonna have to play around because I don't wanna throw out my one if I beat Angel and I gotta go. I, I uh, so uh, I gotta have two here. <laughs> Yeah. I got to tell you, you better throw your best one out there or she's going to whoop you. Oh, yeah. that's, that, that's pretty much standard every day. But, Keith, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that it's against the rule for you to uh, do one to beat Angel or whichever one, and then y'all do the same burger again, just a different day. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I could, yeah, I guess I could do it again. Because if it's only on your page, then, well, I don't know. If it's only on your page, then you've already posted it to social media. Well, I'll, I'll, about to, I'll, just, I'll, I'll tag you and Brett and Timmy, and I'll, I'll tag you guys in it. There you go. Why don't you just tag a few of us, and we'll vote on it. Yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I'll do. The inner circle. Yeah. <laughs> Post it on our, our, our pregame page, whatever yeah. that is, our, yeah. our, mm. our test page. Put it on the yeah. test page, right. Back, call it the back page. <laughs> yeah, the back page. <laughs> Got to be careful what you post on the back page. <laughs> you could do the oh, SKTV page, though. That would be good. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do All it. All right, later. well, we're pushing over an hour hour something now, so I may even break it into two <laughs> shows. So I have to, you know. Brent, get the bur burger challenge out there. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with something. I'll get the burger challenge out this week. Um, I, I'm probably going to try to get it out tonight. So um, should be good. Thank you guys for coming on, Timmy. Thanks hey, for yeah. trying to get that going. Hey, yeah. something's not right with the account, but we'll work on it. Yeah, we'll hey, work on uh, it. You you want to you you want to say some about Gino? Yes. Oh yes, yeah. for sure. That's been a uh, Gino passed yesterday, and Timmy was good friends with Gino too, weren't you, buddy? Yep. I mean, to been message him here the last week or two. Also, it is, you know, just to keep Gino busy. He loved getting texts. He loved getting calls. And um, I, I can share it now because he's passed. But one of his last requests, he called me and he said, hey, Brad, he said, uh, could you do me a favor? And I said, sure. We, what, what can we do, Gino? His, one of his requests to us was, would we, he wants his ashes spread among the ash cans at the World Championship. Oh, wow. Like, his wife said SCA meant that much to him, and he wanted to go to the World Championship one more time. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's thinking. Man. But he, just, he awesome. is awesome. such a good – he was a great mentor. Jason Masonic. What's Jason? I just pronounced it wrong. We just did his show. No, Masonic. Masonic, yeah. Masonic. Um, like oh, Sonic. Yeah. yeah. Jason said he wouldn't have that story he has if it wasn't for him because he went to one event, Nasal, and um, what Gino was there and said, hey, uh, you know, what's going on? Met him at his first cook-off and kind of gave him some pointers, and that got Jason kind of headed in the right direction. He's won nine events. Bill yeah. Mann met him in West Memphis, uh, or uh, in Little Rock, and it was Bill's first cook-off, about 78 teams there. and 
he said, I remember specifically because I met him and he was near the end, but he was sitting right by Gino. And he said he talked to Gino the whole day and Gino would come over, hey man, you know, I noticed you're missing this or that. And Gino gave him a couple things and gave him some tips and just talked to him. But it's guys like Gino that have helped SCA grow and it's, it's hard to lose a good one like him. Yeah, I, I, yeah, speaking of people that have been influenced, I, and this is not my story, I heard it uh, on Facebook, but I think Jimmy Parsons had, an, had a story mm -hmm. uh, where he said he posted a steak uh, that he had done on Facebook, and Gino contacted him and gave him a few pointers uh, through Facebook on, on what he could do, and then they became friends uh, for that. And so, yeah, I, I, I was never uh, lucky enough to meet him, uh, so, but just, you know, at the championship, we had a sign where we, you know, signed it yeah. and uh, for him. And then, you know, they were doing uh, Ben Blanton and them, Terry Roan and them were doing fundraisers and stuff. So I've been involved on that end. I, I, I never had a chance to meet him, but man, just hearing the stories like that, like what you told and then what Jimmy posted that day. And, uh, you know, there's no doubt uh, Ken, uh, Candace Rogers, I think she, she wears a hat. Uh, I don't know if it's actually his hat or one really similar, but no, it's, uh, she does it's that uh, in Oh, I'm totally blanking on her name. I just talked to her Janet. this morning. Janet, Janet Baker. Janet, Janet oh, had sorry, a Janet. real hat. Sorry, Janet. That's right. Janet has his hat. Okay, yeah, that's the one I'm And his Buckeye. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Those little things right there, uh, for somebody like me who never met him, knows, uh, shows me, obviously, you know, what kind of a guy that, that he is and and what he meant to so many people uh, in the sport. So as, it's a terrible day when something like that happens, for sure. Well, Greg, let me, let me challenge you this. Uh, and there's a few things that are coming together. At the Jack Daniels, they have that, oh, I forget what it's called, which you, you write your regrets down and you burn it at Jack Daniels. You ever done that on the Hill? You yeah, I've heard that? of people doing that, yeah. Just do something for the, like that, but not regrets, but – people we want to mortalize like like um a lot of times when people want to you know contact guys they burn incense right so let's have something for i've never said you know but I'm, I'm inspired by what he's saying and i'd like to see something at the world championship that we all lose people throughout the year can we have like the gino corner or the gino <laughs> something that they can bring all their tributes to and offer it up you know in, in his honor that type of thing we're going to definitely have something for him for sure. You know, that's a good suggestion. And, you know, Gino just passed. We also lost a judge that was one of the nicest guys you've ever met too. Craig out of, um, he was out of um, Kansas city, but lived his whole life doing charity. And I mean, just a salt of the earth guy. I mean, he would message me all the time just with words, with words of encouragement out of nowhere. And uh, he passed just a while back too. So we've lost a couple like we just had something here in Georgia in Chadsworth, and uh, there was a tornado. Mike, you probably know this. Tornado went through. I'm pretty close to Chadsworth. And I was just looking on Instagram. I mean, it's, it's a barbecue community that just gets together. It's like, what can we do to help? They don't, even, they don't wait for people to ask that they need help. They're just they're getting together, and they're going. You think about the, the Operation Barbecue Relief. I mean, it, as far as all competition goes, barbecue is the only place that people, if you're out of I don't know, butter, salt, or something, the guy next to you you're competing against will offer you some. I mean, it's it's unusual type of competition, you know? So it, it's, it's maybe something like that that we can offer for Gino and people who, who embody barbecue and just honor them at, at, at uh, the SEA Worlds. Well, we'll think of a play on that. There's something yeah, there. we'll think on that one. There, there's something that's going to come out of it. Still well, you can have the uh, – if they're, if they're burning stuff on the hill at the Jack – uh, and Gino wants his ashes in the ash barrel at the championship. Every year at the championship, you could have a an ash barrel, this the Gino ash barrel, and that's where you go to burn your regrets or or your love. You know, you, you, you regrets. whatever. That'd be kind of, be, I mean, it'd be right. yeah, it should be a positive thing. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Well, I think you know, like, to me, I think the whole uh, wanting his ashes, uh, you know, at, at the championship and in the burn barrels to me is a, uh, you know, not. I, I think it's fantastic. One that you know he loved the sport so much, and that that's you know what's his one of one of his last wishes. Uh, man, that's just that's just a testament of, to the sport, uh, to the competitors, 
to the judges, to the reps, to the to, to Brett and Ken, to everybody behind the scenes. Uh, you know, it's just a good testament to the whole sport in general, and probably why it's one of the fastest growing food sports in the world. <laughs> one, one one heck of a family. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I say it all the time. Hashtag SCA family is not just a hashtag. It's a real thing. And there's a reason that we use that hashtag. There's a reason that Brett's car tag says it. Uh, you know, it is it is for real. I mean, it is a real deal. And, uh, you know, I've been around barbecue some, too, before this, and it just doesn't get any better. I mean, barbecue's tight-knit community, but steak is a tighter, the tightest community I've ever been a part of, competition-wise. Oh. I agree, hundred percent. Mike, that's that's good words for sure. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for coming on. I'm gonna bounce out of here and uh, try to get that video up if I can figure it out. And I spent all all afternoon knocking out this video. <laughs> you might like Pulp Fiction when you see this video. Yeah, it's a good video. I have seen. Ed, thanks for being here, man. We appreciate yeah, all your thank knowledge you, buddy. on B and B thank, and uh, thank, all thank you do for all of us. You see you, Timothy. You see you, Keith. Yes, see you, right. Michael. We'll see you. Thanks, guys. All right, buddy. Let me Bye, end thing. Y'all stay safe. Uh, there you go. You too. Recording stop. Yeah, I just did it. You stopped the recording? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I see